Great. Thanks, Brian, and thanks uh, for the introduction, and thanks um, to all of you for um, returning or um, joining us here after technical difficulties last week. Again, as Brian indicated, we uh, certainly apologize for that. Um, let me start off here and just kind of bring up my introductory slide and um, say again, uh, happy holidays to everybody as well. Whatever holiday it is you are celebrating or about to celebrate, I hope it's a good one. And we'll try to keep uh, today's meeting because of the holiday season um, for as brief as possible. Uh, I know it usually extends into about 4.30 or in some cases even longer. We'll try to keep that to, um, to at least a reasonable amount of time today and allow you to get on with uh, whatever holiday activities you have planned. With that in mind, let me go ahead and get us started here. Uh, again, as... Uh, Anna indicated, uh, my name is Jim White. You can reach me at jwhiteintertech.com. Um, and uh, I do uh, author quite a bit out there in the Azure community. I am actually the author of um, Microsoft's uh, course for library title in this area. So if I can't answer any questions you have, please feel free to use that email address and use me as a resource to see if I can either connect you to the cloud or get that mobile device running, whatever the case might be. Um, the uh, presentation that I'm about to uh, share with you here today, as well as a little bit of sample code that I created for the event today, is also going to be made available uh, through Azure Group. Uh, .net. Um, in fact, I think, and uh, Brianna can correct me if I'm wrong, I think they may actually already be out there and available, but if not, they certainly will be available at the conclusion of today's presentation. Well, so what's our agenda here for today, King? Well, again, I want to introduce you to how to connect your um, Android device to Azure, and so that primarily means that we're going to be talking about the Windows Azure Toolkit uh, for Android, a uh, product provided by uh, Microsoft in an open source environment. We'll talk more about that coming up, obviously. Um, but as I am making a little bit of an assumption here, something we'll also chat about, I'm going to guess that most of you have a pretty good familiarity with Azure, but... Android may be a bit of a foreign topic for you. So I'm also going to try to provide just a quick Android tutorial. We'll first do kind of a poll to see what people's Android background is. If that's uh, an improper assumption on my part, then we might be able to actually skip through some of that Android material. But for those who've never really had a chance to get into Android development, want to provide you a little bit of background, uh, just kind of set the stage for how you can use Android to talk to Azure. Uh, we'll also learn about how to um, get the Azure Toolkit and other uh, paraphernalia up and running. In particular, uh, we're going to be talking a bit about the, this guy here today, and that is cloud-ready packages for devices. And even though the four devices is out there to allow us to connect Android and other things to Azure, uh, don't be fooled. That's actually a great little package to also get um, lots of things, including maybe, for example, other applications you have connected into some of uh, Azure's um, resources in a much more, if you will, pattern-friendly way. We'll talk a bit about that. Uh, we're also going to look at, uh, obviously, how to get an application, Android application, up and talking to Azure and accessing Azure storage. We'll look at, in particular, what the API is uh, for authentication and storage access. Take a look at some demos, both some that Microsoft has put together and also some that I've put together that tries to simplify things a bit. And in the end, we'll also talk a bit about some of the limitations out there around this technology. It is really brand new, so you want to know what some of the limitations are and where you can find some more information. And we'll wrap up with uh, any questions that we haven't tried to or haven't gotten to or haven't been able to address here during the presentation in the end as well. So again, assumptions here are that, um, well, you have a pretty good understanding of Windows Azure. Um, at least from the standpoint you know a little bit about uh, Windows Azure storage, you know how to use the API to access that storage, how to get your account set up in uh, the in and through the management portal, things of that nature. Um, I'm also assuming you have very little or maybe no Android development experience. So we're going to talk a bit about that, again, based on uh, a quick poll. We'll find out uh, where people's experiences are. And if that is in ca the case, in other words, there is very little Android development experience, I'm going to give you a little bit of a walkthrough of how the Android SDK works, a little bit about how uh, Android applications are developed, what it means to get an Android application out to market, things of that nature. Now, Android is a Java platform. Um, 
And while I would love to be able to provide everybody the background and all technologies necessary to get all these pieces and parts working, obviously a tutorial in Java is a bit beyond the scope of our talk here today. So I'll leave that for your kind of review and perusal. But if you don't have a background in Java, some of the Android code may seem a little bit foreign to you. Those who do uh, C Sharp or VB type of technologies, which I assume you would in uh, Azure, um, will at least probably be able to follow along the API to a uh, fair amount. Now, to kind of make sure and level set that I have some of those assumptions correct, let me first of all bring up this uh, first poll here, and that is, what is your background with uh, Windows Azure? What's your skill level here? So let me um, make sure the polls are open here and uh, also allow for folks to um, put in their answers. So I'm seeing most everybody has uh, some experience in, um, in Azure. I have a few people that haven't had, had a chance to to get into uh, Windows Azure. So for some of those folks, again, um, I do uh, do apologize. We probably won't have a chance to give you kind of an introductory of uh, Windows Azure day, but at least you'll get a chance to start to see how Windows Azure um, looks and feels and obviously how it connects to, um, to our environment. Let me see if I can. I'm not quite sure how to maybe share these results. There we go. So everybody can kind of see where we're at. So we do have a few folks, again, who, um, who don't have much uh, Windows Azure uh, experience, but for the most part, it's like most people at least started to dig into Azure a bit. So I think uh, think we'll try to hold to the uh, that at least that first assumption. We'll talk a bit more about uh, Android here coming up in just a bit as well. Okay, now... One slide. There we go. Let's talk a bit about um, what is the Windows, Windows Azure uh, Toolkit for Android. The, again, the kind of the, the basics of what this talk is about. We'll get into more of the details and even a little bit of the API here coming up in just a bit. Um, let me also begin by saying, well, why, why might this topic be important to me as a developer, a manager of uh, application development, things of that nature? Um, and I like to, to use this uh, little note down here at the bottom, cloud to ground lightning. What do I mean by that? Um, there are a lot of enterprises today looking to move either their applications or their data to the cloud. Um, if you don't believe me, well, then certainly take a look at groups like IDC and Gartner and what they're saying. For example, IDC is saying 80% of new enterprise apps are about to be deployed into the cloud. Uh, Gartner is saying by the year 2016, uh, well, I guess we have to say we're a mere four years away from that, then we've got 50% of global 1,000 companies are going to have something up in the cloud. So whether or not you believe in the cloud, whether or not you believe uh, it is the wave of the future, certainly one has to admit that given statistics like that and what we're seeing, there is a large amount of applications and application data moving to the cloud. From the mobile device perspective, um, we're finding that consumers and users are using their mobile devices much like they used to use maybe their desktop or their laptops um, of yesterday. In fact, um, uh, some surveys by PayPal here for this current November, for Black Friday here in November, there was a 516% jump in sales um, on mobile devices this year. That should give you a pretty good indication that that mobile device is becoming more ubiquitous with regard to consumers and, and users. So that's why I like to talk about how this topic is really germane to, I think, the future of our computing industry. We're going to see more things in the cloud, uh, more services, more data available in the cloud, and those are going to be made available more and more to mobile devices, which is really becoming kind of our mainstream of how we communicate nowadays in the computing world. So if you will here, A plus B equals C. More cloud, more mobile. Therefore, I think we're going to see a lot more of this cloud to mobile type of apparatus being necessary. So hopefully that sets the stage for why I think this topic is important. Now, as far as connecting your Android device to Windows Azure, uh, what do you need? You're going to need this thing called the Windows Azure Toolkit. Again, this is something uh, provided by Microsoft. In fact, back in May of this year, Microsoft announced uh, their support, if you will, um, for all sorts of toolkits for mobile platforms and for mobile devices. When they announced uh, or made this announcement back in May, 
they came out with uh, iOS and Windows 7 um, capabilities first. Uh, no surprise there, I guess, that uh, they're going to support probably uh, the Windows uh, platform in the mobile space. And then, of course, iOS, uh, most people kind of consider, at least until recently, one of the leading platforms out there. Although Android today is certainly challenging that, and in some surveys has actually eclipsed the iOS space in terms of the number of devices out there. So those were out there first in May. It's not until very recently here that we've seen support from Microsoft on the Android platform. In fact, as you can see here, uh, my date is uh, August 31st. So essentially September of this year is when the Android toolkit was made available. Uh, the current version we're sitting at right now is 0 0.8, so that tells you, yeah, we're still uh, cutting our teeth a little bit on this technology. In some cases, it'll bite back as we'll learn and talk a bit about the, the toolkit coming up. Um, so when we take a look, a very new platform, uh, it is an open source product. In fact, all of the toolkits for mobile devices are open source products, and this one happens to fall under the Apache license. So uh, that is uh, an interesting development, especially as a Java developer, most of what we do is from the open source community, and uh, having the ability to connect up to Azure in an open source way, very beneficial. What does this toolkit provide? At least, what does the Windows Azure toolkit for Android provide? Well, a couple things. It's going to give us access to Windows Azure Azure Storage. For those not familiar with Windows Azure Storage, we'll talk about what those capabilities are here in just a second. And then also authentication. How do you get uh, connected in a secure fashion, identify yourself to the Windows Azure platform? In particular, we're going to find that that is going to be necessary. In other words, you need that authentication really in order to be able to uh, get access to Windows Azure Storage. We'll talk about those authentication means, and there are various ones coming up here in a second as well. So what we're looking at essentially is access to to Azure storage and authentication capabilities through this toolkit. Uh, I should also mention here, as I've gotten my note, um, when you look at the other toolkits, one thing to note is that at least today, uh, Android is a bit behind. In other words, if you look at the uh, Windows 7 phone toolkit or the iOS version of the toolkit, you'll actually find more capability in those toolkits than what we find in Azure Day. For example, access to um, SQL Azure, which essentially is SQL Server in the Microsoft Cloud, and even things like push notifications. If you're familiar with iOS or uh, Windows 7 phone capabilities, sort of a uh, minimalistic um, SMS type of capability, those are not available today in the Windows Azure Toolkit for Android. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that, too, in terms of where Android uh, development is as far as Microsoft's concerned and some of the future that uh, we are still awaiting as far as this toolkit is concerned as we get closer to our end of our talk today.